Hey everybody, I'm Eric. I'm Justin. Uh, we're co-founders of Sonic Bloom, a game and audio tools developer. Uh, we are fans of the game industry in general, uh, and especially of game audio, uh, given that's kind of our our speciality. That's our wheelhouse. Uh, yeah. And every week, uh, we cover game industry news and from an, from an industry perspective. And we cover game audio topics uh, that are near and dear to our hearts. Um, speaking of the news, let's jump right in. Yeah. Justin, number one, right off the bat. Go for it. All right. This one's, this one's kind of easy. Uh, if anybody's been following the actual game industry news, not like game announcements and whatnot, but actual news, uh, there's been lots of rumors swirling around Microsoft and Nintendo having some sort of partnership. Um I'd like to explore like what makes sense about that, why Microsoft would be entertaining this idea, um, and and why people believe this. Uh, in, in the the big uh, like you know uh, uh, like bit of evidence people are working with is that every time um, we, there's like an Xbox conference or like announcement ever since you know the pandemic started, we have um, you know like people presenting from their office. And there's been like subtle things dropped in the the in like the office space uh, that that has hinted towards like purchases and and whatever else. Um, and this actually talks about two of our points. Weirdly, it's the bit of evidence everybody's working off of is that um, in the background we had we had a Nintendo Switch sitting in the background, and um, and to another future point, we also had a Kojima production um, like bust. Uh, in the background as well, so this is this is spun a bunch of speculation, uh, but there's also there's other stuff that's more than that. Uh, particularly that Nintendo and Microsoft has seem to be have been working together for some time now, uh, in, in like a weird capacity. Basically, uh, Microsoft owns Rare, or Xbox Studios owns Rare, uh, Rare owns uh, uh, like Conquer and and Banjo Kazooie, and when you know Sp Smash is being developed. Um, uh, basically Nintendo was able to work with, um, Microsoft and get, uh, Banjo and Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. And they also had the Minecraft guy, uh, in Smash as well. So, like, clearly there's some sort of working relationship. They're both in Seattle too. So, like, that helps, I guess, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the speculation around it. Um, so I think, I think we can talk about, about, like, why Nintendo or why Microsoft and Nintendo might be entertaining this what that might mean for Microsoft or Nintendo and and uh, what we might be able to expect from a potential partnership. Uh, Eric, do you want to talk about any of those points? Uh, why don't you start off uh, and then uh, I'll pick up on some of the points. Were you paying through. attention to me? Yeah, I, my, <laughs> I, my mind went in like 30 different directions with that because of, of uh, you know, what <laughs> what things in the background of videos can mean when you're talking to game developers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I think, I think the, the, the biggest thing is like, why wouldn't Microsoft be entertaining this at all? They've, they've been happy to put Minecraft on the switch. They've been happy to move some of their titles over. Uh, I think Ori, Ori's got a switch release. It um, does, yeah. Yeah. So yep. like there's weird things like that going on where, uh, and I think fundamentally like Microsoft and Sony occupy very similar spaces within the, the, you know, uh, game console sales space. And Nintendo occupies their own thing. It's not to say that they don't have crossover in sales because I think they obviously do. But Nintendo mm -hmm. has taken the time ever since the Wii to say, like, we're not going to compete on this, like, graphical, uh, you know, like, uh, arms race. We're going to do our own thing. It's going to appeal to people differently. We want to appeal to families. We want to have a, a broader po uh, a broader platform. And um, I, I don't think... Nintendo sales largely cannibalize PlayStation or Xbox sales and vice versa. Uh, so I think strategically it's, it's no sort off of Microsoft's back to actually entertain the idea of some sort of partnership in which uh, their technologies or whatever else could be shared across platforms. Yeah. I mean, especially if it's, if it's just extra money for them uh, for games that are not exclusively launched on the Nintendo platform. Yeah. yeah. There's that. So like, the other the other thing I think maybe we're on the same page about we didn't check on this but like <laughs> what would a Microsoft partnership look like on the Switch? What could it possibly look like? 
I mean, you know, I, I think it, it, it to start, it would just be game publishing deals where Nintendo you know, allows Microsoft to put certain game titles on on the Switch. Uh, clearly, Nintendo with the Switch generation has been very lax about and open to bringing in as many game titles as they can. You know, with uh, if you go back 20, 25 years, Nintendo was a bit much more particular uh, company about when it came to deciding what type of content it would allow on one of its consoles. And at this point, it seems like the gates are mostly open. Um, and in terms of, of games, it seems it's the more the merrier come, come to the switch kind of a stance. Now, I think the end game for Microsoft may be clearly we, we want game pass <laughs> on the switch. We want all every screen to be a gateway to uh, uh, our game subscription service and the switch is a very popular screen where people are already used to playing games so if we can get them into that then sure they can continue to play their nintendo games but they could also just switch over to the game pass app and load up any game that works with you know the the um the game cloud streaming service yeah i'd also like to mention that like they're already streaming games uh there are a handful yeah. of titles that have been released on the switch that are, are streaming fundamentally uh, in order to get more graphics out of it. Um, so it's capable of doing it clearly. I, I think the Tegra chips actually is, is pretty well uh, equipped to handle that uh, as, as the Nvidia shield, which uses the Tegra chip uh, was a streaming platform as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, uh, I think, I think th there's a lot of opportunity in the platform. Plus, you know, as I said earlier, there's like, the crossover between the two platforms is is not one to one. Like it's not it's like every person who buys a Switch is not going to buy an Xbox. You have potentially the same in there, but there's a couple things going for Nintendo, which is it's a more family friendly platform. It's a uh, it has a wider, um, you know, a more casual user base, uh, and uh, you know there are the the barrier of entry being like a three or four hundred dollar console, um, or two or three hundred dollar console. Uh, makes it so that more people can afford it, and so there, there may be a, a substantial amount of of Switch owners that are broadly not game players, like on Xbox or uh, PlayStation, and that might be ripe for the picking. Yeah. The uh, now I, I think there's there's still a separate question, which is like, why would Nintendo play along? Like, it's, say Game Pass does actually make it to the Switch, what's in sure. it for Nintendo to even? do something like that besides maybe like taking cash from Microsoft. Yeah. I, I do wonder if there is a way that, that they could, you know, what would there be? Is there a future where it makes any sort of sense for Nintendo to start putting Nintendo games on a game pass, like the game pass technology so that they could do their own streaming thing. Like they wouldn't have to build out, the same infrastructure backend that Microsoft has already with Azure and uh, Google has with GCP. Um, but that through uh, being able to allow people to buy the, the Xbox Game Pass, that then they could, um, the deal in the back end would be that Microsoft would open up their platform and say, you can have Nintendo Game Pass uh, and limit that to the platforms that you want to support. So that could just be only Nintendo devices will have this but you could have a subscription-based game service with all of these things and play all of your library of games. Yeah, I mean, they're already doing it with EA. So, I mean, it's yeah. potential that, like, they could make Nintendo, like, they could partner with Nintendo and make their, it all part of the overall Game Pass system. And, uh, well, you know, if, if I, Nintendo's titles were available on a, on a single Game Pass subscription service, that would probably be, a, a, you know, a nail in the coffin for anybody else trying to put together a streaming service. The only way I can see that happening outside... So the, what I was specifically suggesting is that Nintendo gets their own, not in Xbox Game Pass, but it would be Nintendo Game Pass. None of the games show up in Microsoft's offering. But Nintendo does allow Game Pass to be on a, a, a Nintendo device alongside their own set of uh of system maybe i'm just saying if they, they do it there's a lot of possibilities as to how that actually gets carried out right they could I, they could yeah. limit it to consoles they could limit the games that they put on there but i mean if there was a broader game pass system that had nintendo and xbox published titles on there in whatever I, capacity plus ea 
uh, I don't know how any other studio or company would compete with that offering. Um, yep. All right, let's let's move on to the next topic, um, okay. which is is associated. Uh, and basically, there has been strong rumors of uh, Microsoft publishing Kojima's next title, um, as people mm-hmm. might have remembered. Uh, Death Stranding was published by Sony uh, in some sort of publishing deal after Kojima uh, had separated itself from Konami um, with the Metal Gear Solid series. So Sony stepped in, said, hey, we'll publish um, Death Stranding. Death Stranding did okay, but not so well that Sony was first to option that game uh, for for PC um, uh, PC uh, porting. Uh which which actually helped I think Kojima pull in another like twenty four million for the game, um, so it, you know it's made them money at the very least. But uh, it, Kojima Productions as itself is not a uh, is not a you know Sony owned or second party studio. It's their own independent studio. They they uh, have have free reign to go to whoever they want. Um, they're unlikely to self publish at this point. Um, so that would mean that they would be scoping someone to publish them, be it Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, um, Google, Apple, whatever. Uh, any of those companies could be could be publisher of the next Kojima game. Um, so, uh, you know, there's there's definitely some credibility behind how this could happen. Um, I guess the question is is why would why would Sony either drop Kojima or why would Kojima drop Sony and look for a different publisher. Yeah, I mean, I I think that that it would be just looking at the history of how Death Stranding happened. Um, you know, it's weird when it comes to Kojima. If you look at the past, like most of the games there are Metal Gear, uh, which developed. You know, it kind of it kind of developed into a, a massive hit. You know, it started with Metal Gear back in the, you know, pre any it was around, what, around the NES era? There was, yeah, there was, it was the NES. Like, and on... Like the Sega Master System? There was no, some, no, it was, it was a different the, concept, but I can't remember like, it. So Yeah, the Panasonic something or other, I think. I, I don't remember. But best, definitely way, way, way back. Uh, and then Metal Gear Solid became the first hit in, you know, on the PlayStation 1 um, for all of the fresh gameplay that it had. And then Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, and 4. Was there a 5? I think there was a 5. Yeah, that's the one that's on... PS4? On, uh, yes, I think. But it's not called PS... Or it's not called Metal Gear 5. I don't think. No, it is. <laughs> it is. Snake something or other? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It. I never played what much beyond the first one. And uh, Metal Gear Solid, that is. Um uh but you know that developed it became a thing uh and at some point it it, the the i'm sure that the the name carried carried it and people wanted more of the same story that they were used to so here comes kojima with something that's like somewhat interesting gameplay but a totally new story that's very weird uh in a new world it's also very weird uh and it it just probably didn't get the type of reception for the market of today uh, to get the the money that that game presumably cost to build. And I think that would just be it right there is either Kojima might be looking at it and saying Sony published, but their advertising setup didn't understand the game enough to really market it on the right uh, channels. To, to really I, I mean, no one really understood that game, including. Like, it's a, it's a hard game to understand because, like, <laughs> it, when they it was like, when Kojima was being interviewed about it, they're like, "What's this game?" He's like, "It's a walking simulator," and people are like, "Ah, it's funny," but it's like, no, it is. Yeah. Right. Like that. It, it, that's what it is, and it's like, how do you take concepts like that, which, uh, you know, expertly executed on, for a walking simulator, or package delivery delivery simulator? Um, but yep. you know, how, how do you justify like a, you know, a hundred and fifty million dollar game with that? Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, it, I played through the entire thing and I enjoyed it, um, mostly because I was like, "What is this story? What is happening?" <laughs> and there were some definitely cool moments. Also, graphically, it was astounding. Um, 
but uh my god there were just definitely like I, you ask me like how would you market it and i'm like i i have no idea what i would do differently how i would do it other than show more pictures of the weird baby So, yeah, I can see that. And if, if it's all high concept with Kojima at this point, uh, it's 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 who's going to take the risk and on the on that amount of money uh, to, to get something that's high concept. I mean, I think most publishers would, except for Sony, who might have been burnt by the whole thing and not eager to drop money on on Kojima. But, right. you know, certainly I think there's there's plenty of Xbox fans who would you know, just just take the chance to, like, you know, put salt in Sony's eye to be like, look, we got Kojima. I will say this about Kojima. Brilliant designer, right? Brilliant, brilliant designer. Way too full of himself half the time because uh, without uh, yeah. proper restrictions on that man, uh, he does some pretty brazen stuff that has not worked well with any of his publishers thus far. Well, and, the there's a, and there's a good reason for it, too. Well, the what is the reason because because his games are 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 conceptually far out there i i'm certain a lot of money is spent on developing things that don't actually contribute to the larger game and half the time he's trying to be like a movie star like or he's trying to be like a a, a movie director right like director yeah yeah metal gear solid 4 was more movie than it was game Right yep. and and was not that enjoyable when you did get to play it. You're like, oh, this is really solid. But eighty percent of the game was well, not eighty percent, but like say like sixty percent of the game was these long cinematics that just went on and on and on, stuff like that. Uh, and his best work has always been when he's constrained. Like Metal Gear Solid is a phenomenal oh. game. I completely agree. I think I think someone needs what I was going to say is that um, someone needs to the next people that 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 work with kojima you need to treat him as a um uh an indie game developer and give him an indie sized budget with an indie team uh and say look you don't have a uh, infinite monies you can't make the best graphics and the most cinematic thing here is are your limitations you can make your walking simulator but you have to do it with less build and then see what what comes of it i think uh you know that is a on a business sense, it is a much more manageable um, uh, 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 way to approach the problem. If you're like, yeah, you have very interesting and high concept story uh, and game designs, and that's fantastic. But when you are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to develop a game, you are expecting to get that times in multiples back. And generally, you have to hit a broad target for that to work out. You need to make a game that will appeal to many, many people, which means usually sticking to tried and true formula with a few twists here and there uh, so that that people see something that they recognize and say, oh, yeah, I want that looks awesome. It's kind of like this thing I played before, but but a different story, you know, like that's that's how we keep getting things like um, Assassin's Creed 25 and, you know, uh, all the different shooters that are Battlefield and, and Call of Duty and those games are still going. I mean, I mean, the brilliance that Kojima brings to games is is definitely needed in the game industry. But I, I would agree, sure. like his his brand of of IP is uh, is uh, is more in line with that of independent developers, uh, like small smaller size titles, like 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 I think we've talked about this before, but the Silent Hill or like. You know, oh my P god pt demo is oh is brilliant is like completely brilliant and totally restricted in a way that yeah. allows uh kojima's brilliance to shine and i don't feel like you get the same thing with with metal gear metal gear has lots of weird nuances and quirks and it's it's incredible what he's able to stuff into that game yeah. but i cannot stick with those games anymore it's just like my god there's so many weird things in here and the story can't even make doesn't make sense and like yeah stuff like I, that you know uh, yeah, anyway we'll getting see. back to to the kojima thing what i do what we I really want to keep talking about kojima you're just digging yourself a hole what i expect is if if when kojima has that situation where he is has the checks or has limitations placed on him the feeling that i have is like playing a that game company game which is headed by Genova chen 
like uh you know uh journey or flower those types of of really tight deep experiences are are the the um it's different it's not exactly the same but but it's that type of really polished experience that um i expect <laughs> from from kojima yeah. all right let's let's move on oh, yeah. to the last topic sure. uh this is the one we were talking about before we jumped into this yeah, yeah. Uh, this gets into uh, uh quite a bit of like develop game development industry insider uh drama in a way it's it's and and team and like projects in the game my a really big thing to realize about this uh as we go into it and keep in mind is that the games industry is an industry of passion and that the developers who make these games put their hearts and souls into them generally uh and really want to have some creative say and creative control over what they do yes it sure is uh, mm -hmm. th this is about, um, so basically, uh, Jason Schreier, who used to uh, report for, he's a, he's, he's like, he goes way back, like, I think all the way back to E, e um, what is it called? EGM. Oh, but basically, boy. he's been a long time reporter for, for game industry. Uh, and he recently moved over to Bloomberg. Uh, and he proceeded to write an article that uh, dropped some truth bombs uh on people uh for better or for worse but basically it, it's a an entire article about uh sony studios which uh and, and the drama within it and basically there's uh sony had an has their their known studios insomniac um naughty dog uh santa monica etc uh ben. and they have yeah bend uh and they have supporting studios that uh are speckled all over the world that help uh, build up these AAA studio games. They provide art. They provide QA. They provide, um, you know, uh, uh, code help, asset help, stuff like that. Uh, one of these studios, uh, in which this entire report is about, uh, had had pitched to Sony to do their own development, um, and and uh, subsequently got the carpet taken out from underneath them when it was handed back over to. Um, one of the main studios. Uh, Eric, you want to go into the details of that? But, so there is this group within Sony that's basically their kind of strike force for when a game needs work. And this happens a lot in, in AAA game development where a game is making it to a certain point and they realize, wow, we're way over scope here and we need to develop, we need, we need help getting just all the content in or certain in certain circumstances, we have technical limitations that we need expertise to resolve in order to make this work according to the design spec or the publisher's demands, the publisher in this case being Sony. And uh, you'll get a bunch of these people that come in and, and you know, uh, big publishers like uh, Ubisoft will do this all the time. They have literally teams around the world and they'll just kind of shift small groups within them onto different projects to help out where it makes sense. Uh, in this case, the, the visual arts service group uh has been around for quite a while uh and one of the people who who became a, a director of that group uh michael mumbauer um kind of started apparently to work with um if, and fairly recently started to work with uh sony executives it sounds like uh to kind of develop themselves a group of the developers from that group uh so a subgroup into its own studio that he wanted to to get a bunch of people to uh, graduate into a, a separate studio and be able to create their own titles rather than work as a strike team. Uh, and it sounds as though they were given some leeway to do that. The project that they took on, they pitched a a remake of the, of the original Uncharted for the, P the PlayStation 5, but it was deemed too complex. So then they went back and said, okay, well, why don't we pitch The Last of Us, which is a more modern engine, particularly since The Last of Us remake, or not remake, um, The Last of Us remastered was a PlayStation 4 release. Uh, and they were basically like, well, we're going to remake this for PlayStation 5 uh, and, and update it. Uh, they got the tentative go ahead. And so that team started working on that, that game, jamming on it. Um, and after a bit of time, Sony... Sony's management had a shuffle and the new kind of director of whatever group that that 
uh, subgroup fell under looked at the progress of the game and said no this isn't this this isn't good enough it's not what i expect and then they started to pull in original developers out of naughty dog after they had finished up last of us 2 to bring them in to help out with the development over time that you know that process increased so that they got more and more developers out of naughty dog and at some point the roles reversed and naughty dog took on the project they became the leads on it uh and this other sub team became once again into that role of we are a strike force effectively helping this other team make their game uh so the team that had ostensibly been in that position of we're given the go ahead to try to make it on our own and build our games uh seems to have failed and that the to them the uh rug had been pulled out from underneath them in a manner of speaking uh and they they were not given the leeway that they they thought they needed in order to make it successful i'll also say say this is all allegedly this none of it's been confirmed yes. uh but it That's comes right. from jason schreier and he's a good reporter so i imagine that he has With lots and lots of industry contacts yes yes um <laughs> yeah. well connected yeah so uh again just a brief like summarize the whole thing because it's it's a it's an interesting conversation one way or another but the the whole thing is sony's internal support not studio group um gets a small part of it that fractures fractures off it tries to form uh their own group that was that is given permission to uh develop their own game they pitch uncharted that shot down because it's deemed too expensive um likely due to the age of the the game and the engine uh they go back they pitch last of us they're given a tentative green light to start developing uh they 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 develop it for i don't know how long it's not clear uh it, it's just it it suggested that the the switchover happens after last of us 2 is released so um it, it was it was being developed before last of us 2 was released either way um sony yep. uh allows um people from naughty dog to start coming in and taking leadership roles and eventually uh it, it's taken out entirely not entirely out from underneath um this group but uh they're no longer uh owners of the product and the in the product ownership goes goes to naughty dog um so uh, be, people were making a big deal out of this going like uh this is a a big sign that sony doesn't know what they're doing or their studio structure is falling apart uh etc cetera, etc cetera. um so i i think the, the questions here I'll, I'll pose it to you eric is like what do you what is your take of this what do you think that this is particularly out of the ordinary? Um, you know what what might be going on here, and and is it really that? Uh, th- is it really a sign of Sony's internal studio uh, falling apart? What I think is going on here is that there are a bunch of people who had misaligned expectations with those within a certain group of of um, th- within that visual art service group. And then the manage the the executive management team, uh, who kind of oversee all that that group as well as a bunch of other studios. I think uh, what happened was it sounds as though there were these this conversation about we're going to try to establish another studio. We need a project to do that. Let's start with this project. And then the either the expectation was not correctly set then, or when that management transition happened it was not recommunicated to the new person that was ahead in the head of that position. Uh, and then communication broke down from there. What happened is typical in the games industry where uh, a game project seen by a publisher will say, this team is not equipped well enough to build the project that we want. We're going to take it away from them. And, you know, at the end of some such and such milestone, and we will shift it over to this team or we'll bring in more people or, you know, it's they're paying the bills so they get to make the calls. And this happens all the time. Both Justin and I have been on, on, on projects where the publisher was like, okay, we'll give you a green light uh, on your, your vertical slice. We'll get this going. And then we'll see at each milestone, we'll reevaluate if we want to continue going with this. And eventually they just, in many cases, the publisher will say, nope, we're not, we're not seeing the progress we want, or this is going in a different direction than we expected. We're canceling it. And then in some cases, you can kind of take your game with you. In some cases, the publisher owns the IP and 
you can't do anything with it in this case uh it sounds as though sony was like well we know the last of us has legs we'll we'll just bring in developers from the last of us to actually get it you know to where we think we're comfortable with it and and developers that, that are had... more comfortable with the engine that they're likely building off of right yeah i mean and the, that are are intimately familiar with all the the design conversations that happened because they were the ones who did the initial work right the the games that you see undergo massive amounts of play testing internally and development iteration to get to the the mechanics that you end up playing as as at the end of the day uh and it's possible that they were like look we can bring in the experts on this exact system because they wrote it uh and then have them come in and help update the the mechanics for modern consoles yeah i mean especially if they're if they're going to be borrowing say mechanics from last of us 2 2 like yeah the, the yep. combat system is completely different the sneaky me- mechanisms are completely different so if it's like a full remake in which there is going to be new features and sony might be willing to spend more money on it yep they may very well be like i'm uncomfortable giving a company that is not familiar with any of the two engines uh giving them the reins where we might be more willing to say okay it's it was going to be a 30 million dollar job but now we're going to make it you know a, a 75 million dollar job but Naughty Dog's in charge and they're going to be porting over the modern engine like the modern mechanics into The Last of Us making it more of a value for someone to buy because it's going to play differently um yeah. I don't really know the situation of the game I this is speculative but if they're right. going to be going ahead and in, in taking up Naughty Dog's resources to do something my guess is that the the budget of this has ballooned at this point you know I think that your point previously about bringing in people that that built the Last of Us 2 tech and those, you know, for the mechanics and everything. That is hugely important here because if you're looking at this from Sony's standpoint, you're looking at it and saying, okay, we have dated mechanics that are going to need to be updated. The team themselves have admitted this. We have the other team that originally built it that have already iterated and have a another an already next-gen version of, you know, an iteration on those mechanics. We've paid them a ton of money to get that done. Why are we 